everyone, it's Mari. I'm back again today with some crafty inspiration for Studio Light and Ecstasy Crafts. I'm going to be creating this slimline card for you today that you see on the screen using some beautiful products from Studio Light, including this beautiful grunge stamp. This is stamp 35 with those beautiful hibiscus florals. I'm also going to be using from the Grunge Artist Atelier collection this die set or some pieces from this die set. This is SLGR CD. 22. I am going to link up to all of these products in the description box below. So just go ahead and refer down to the bottom of the video just in the share more section. I'm going to stamp out the beautiful stamp set with some Versifying Claire Nocturne ink using my Studio Light stamp press. This is a really fun tool. It actually allows you to um, stamp in the exact same spot that you've previously stamped in. It's a repositionable stamping tool and it's really great because it's kind of spring loaded and so it allows you to use clear uh, stamps like the one I used here as well as red rubber stamps as well. Now I've stamped the image out with this um, ink that is waterproof and so what that's going to allow me to do is watercolor this beautiful image. I'm using some water um, watercolor markers or markers that are a water base and so I've scribbled the pigment out onto my craft mat that I'm working on here and I've picked it up with a wet watercolor brush and I'm just applying a wash of color all over the hibiscus florals. So for each one of these different bloom areas I'm just doing a wash of that beautiful purple and then I'll go in directly with the marker onto the paper in the areas where I want some darker um, shadow areas so I'll just drop that pigment in and then I'll take my wet water brush again and pull that pigment out and darken the image up in the shade areas so really super easy to do with this gorgeous stamp because the stamp has all of the different shading lines on it so wherever you want that darker area you can just drop in the color and pull it out with your watercolor brush and you are good to go there are a bunch of different watercolor markers in the ecstasy craft shop i have linked up two markers in the description box below as well if you're interested in checking those out but i'm just showing you here for on one of the blooms how i added the shadows in just a really really simple and easy process and there's not much water in my brush when i'm adding the shadows in it's just damp so that i'm just getting a little bit of movement of that pigment in those shadow areas and this is just a really quick and easy way to color up an image and I did stamp this out if I forgot to mention it on watercolor paper so it's just uh, you know allows me to use a little bit more moisture and dampness on the paper than if it was just regular paper. So now I'm just going to go in and use that same process with the green. So I've done a wash of the light green on the leaves and then went in with a darker green to add a little bit of detail. This is just a little bit of um, metallic sparkly product here. So if you have the pixie sparkles pixie dust sparklers I think they're called or something like that from Cosmic Shimmer um, that'd be a good product for this but just anything that's got a little bit of sparkle in it that can be uh, water can be added to it and you can apply with a brush that's what I did in the areas where there's sort of like that detailed uh, texture in the stamp around the hibiscus. Now I created a mask with some masking paper just by stamping the image out on that paper again and fussy cutting around the florals. And what I wanted to do was in the white area of the watercolor paper, I wanted to add some ink blending. So I'm covering the area that I've already painted with my mask. And now I'm going to take some antique linen oxide ink and I'm just going to blend that onto my watercolor paper in the area areas where there isn't any coloring so far and that's just going to provide a really nice bit of pigment around my florals. Now I was really kind of going for an antique -y look with this piece that I am um, working on here. I wanted it to just kind of look 
sort of old and worn a little bit and I just felt like the antique linen was the perfect choice of a color for the area around my florals because it is very neutral so I'm just blending that on and I will also mention that I did use a decal edge trimmer to cut out my watercolor paper so that it does have a little bit of a decal edge on it where um, I'm creating this piece for my card front. So I'm going to finish up with that antique linen here, as you can see, and then I'm going to reveal, I'm going to take the mask off and reveal just how pretty that looks. I just feel like the um, florals just really pop off of there with that beautiful purple color. And I'm not sure if you can get purple hibiscus or find purple hibiscus, but I just really love this color for this particular stamp, but you could color them up in whatever color you want. I'm doing some white paint splatters at this point here. This is just a medium that's obviously a liquid medium. You could just take some white acrylic paint from your stash, whatever white medium you like to splatter with. I've got this in a splat box and I've splattered that with the white and now I'm splattering with a gold mist. So any type of gold pigment that you have that's shiny that you could water down or if you have a gold mist you could uh, do some gold splatters if you'd like as well. Now this is some rusty hinge oxide ink and I just wanted to add a little bit more of that sort of like antique look to the edge of my paper. So I went in with some rusty hinge first and now I'm going in with some frayed burlap and like I said these are all distress oxide inks. So I'm just going to add with my applicator here a little bit more of that frayed burlap and that's just going to define the edge of my paper a little bit more and antique it a little bit more. Now I'm going to be using some paper from this gorgeous mixed paper pad. This is um, SLESMPP03 and I have linked up to this paper pad in the description box below beautiful elements that you can fussy cut and use for lots of different types of projects. This paper pad definitely for me will be used more for my memory planner pages, but I definitely wanted to use one of these papers on my card today because it's so beautiful and it just goes so nicely with the colors that I chose for my hibiscus. So I'm just going to flip through the whole pad so that you can see what the papers are like, but I'm going to choose this one that's just got that really beautiful purple and it kind of looks like a watercolor. Now I'm going back to that grunge uh, artist atelier die set that I showed you at the beginning and I did use that panel to cut out the purple paper and then I used this really fun kind of a ticket edge die from that set to cut out another element of the card front. Now my card base is 3.5 by 8.25 that's my slimline size that I'm using and I have taken that ticket edge die cut piece and I have added some foam adhesive to the back of it it, and I'm going to adhere that onto my slimline card base and that's just going to give that some nice dimension and I really like how that pops up off my card base in that way and now I'm going to take that uh, paper that I've die cut out as well and adhere that with my tape runner onto the piece that is popped up. So now my card is all ready to add my beautiful watercolor piece to. I'm just going ahead and checking out, making sure and eyeballing this so that it's nice and straight and just going to get that adhered down and I'll be ready to add my watercolored element card front to this area. Now you'll notice there's a little bit of open space at the top and bottom. I'm totally fine with that. I don't mind that at all. And I'm just going to make sure that it's symmetrical from top to bottom. And now I'm also going to add a little bit of dimensional adhesive. So this is a this is a liquid adhesive glaze and it just dries um, really nice and dimensional. And I'm going to put it wherever there's a little water drop that's on the stamped image. So if you have some glossy accents or something like that, um, this happens to be Nouveau Crystal Glaze, but anything like that will work. And you can just see I'm adding this in and I'm going to set this aside and let it dry because it does take a little while for this uh, product to dry and I don't want to, um, you know, disturb it once I have it down. Before it is dry though, I am going to also do a little bit of gold stickle accents to the centers of my hibiscus. 
And I'm also going to add a few little gems. So where I did put that glossy um, adhesive, I'm also going to add in a few of those little bubble areas, a few of these crystal gems. And that's just going to add again, just a few little really pretty element dimensional elements to the card that are just going to make it look really super pretty. Just the, all of those little bits that you can add to your project that just make it look even more extra special, I think are really fun to go ahead and add to a project. So here I'm just kind of trying to decide which bubbles I'm going to add these little gems to and once I've got them sort of like scattered around the card from top to bottom here and there I will be happy with that and I'll be moving on to the next step. So I'm just going ahead and finishing that up picking up the last couple of gems and I'm loving how that's looking. Now this is a stamp set from the Another Love Story collection. This is um, hmm, that is SL ALS stamp 02 I believe and I have linked it as well at the bottom. Now I am going to use my anti-static powder tool on my white cardstock using my stamp press. I'm going to do a little bit of heat embossing so I'm going to make sure that my embossing powder is only going to stick to my embossing ink by using that anti-static powder tool. I'm going to stamp that out with some Versamark ink. And once I've got that all stamped and nicely, I'm going to take that inked up stamp and close the door of my stamp press and get that stamped out. I'm using some gold embossing powder here for my sentiment, which is happy birthday. And once I've got that embossing powder on there, I will take that to my heat tool and melt the embossing powder. And it's just going to create the most beautiful gold shiny sentiment. It looks really pretty when it's all melted. So I'm just going to use my really hot heat tool here to melt the embossing powder to reveal this really pretty dimensional sentiment that I'm going to use on my card front. I will be using another one of the dies from that Artist Atelier Grunge die set. Um, love that there's so many different dies in that set that can be used in so many ways. So I'm going to use this little shape here for cutting out my sentiment. As you can see, I've already done. And that's just a really nice addition to the card front. I wanted to just add a little bit of extra sparkle to this element by taking a little bit of of gold embossing powder. This is some pigment ink and I have linked up to something very similar to this product in the description box below. And I'm just taking a little ink dabber here and I'm going to add that ink to the edges of my sentiment piece here just to make it pop off of my card a little bit more and add that little bit of extra um, to the edges. Now I do have some foam adhesive on the back of that sentiment. I'm adding it onto my card front and I wanted to just put it over to the side kind of in the center um, so that it doesn't cover up too much of my florals and in that way it still looks really balanced and symmetrical. I love how that looks and it's just that extra pop on my card to finish it off. Friends, thank you so much for joining me today. I really loved all of these products that I used and I had so much fun creating this project today for Studio Light and Ecstasy Crafts. I hope to see you another time here on my channel. Have a great day.